Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. When Fanny Crosby wrote the beloved hymn, He Hideth My Soul, perhaps she was musing upon what we read at the end of Exodus chapter 33, the experience of Moses, God saying, I will place you in a certain place in the rock, cover you there with my hand, and then I will pass by and you shall see my glory, or perhaps or in addition, she was musing upon Psalm 27 and verse 5, which reads, For in the day of trouble he will conceal me in his tabernacle, in the secret place of his tent he will hide me, he will lift me up on a rock. But now here is the full group to sing this beloved hymn, He Hideth My Soul. Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the scriptures, God's blessed and holy word, in order to find the answers. Question number one, can you tell me about the prophet Jeremiah? Did he ever travel to the British Isles? First part of that question, could you tell me about the prophet Jeremiah? Yes, indeed. Jeremiah is one of the three major prophets, and along with Daniel, there is that fourth great voice that comes to us smack in the middle of the Old Testament. You will find this just past the book of Psalms and a, a few more books there. Jeremiah in tandem with Ezekiel, which is the book immediately following, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, they were prophets that God sent to the Israelites 
in a very particular time of distress, at a low point in the nation of Israel. God had warned through Moses that if the people were not faithful in following after the Lord, that the Lord would remove them from the land which he was giving to them in the time of Moses and Joshua. They would be removed and be, be taken into captivity. That happened at the end of the 600s and beginning of 500s BC, before Christ. Jeremiah was the man who was among those yet in Jerusalem and so southern kingdom who were yet there, and Jeremiah witnessed the fall of J Jerusalem to the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. Now, Ezekiel, as I said, working in tandem with, is, uh, with Jeremiah, though at a great distance, Ezekiel was already among those who had been earlier deported into Babylon. And Ezekiel, the man there among his people, Jeremiah among those who were yet a remnant among those in Jerusalem. God having a man, having a voice in order to challenge the people and speak truth to them when there were so many other voices that would wish to distract them. Jeremiah is an interesting study indeed and how I would love to linger long on this, but just a few more remarks. Jeremiah, over about a 40 year period of ministry, spoke truth in the city of Jerusalem and in the environs round about, he is remembered as the weeping prophet. Interesting that when Jesus asked his disciples, who do the people say that I am? The word on the street as reported back to Jesus by his disciples said, well, some of you think, some think that you're Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Very interesting that the people identified Jesus as a similar heart as Jeremiah, that Jesus was one who empathized with the people. He did not come to beat upon the people, but that there was a true empathy and a compassion for them. And Jeremiah, in this very similar way, was that kind of individual. Jeremiah was not permitted to marry, and later in his life, he is taken when Jer Jerusalem finally does fall into the hands, fully and completely into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. Jeremiah, interestingly, is permitted his freedom to remain or to do as he wishes by the invading force. There was a small remnant who would not submit. Jeremiah said, you must submit. This is not of man's doing. This is God's hand. There were many Jews who said, no, no, we're not going to submit. No, nothing doing. And they went down into Egypt and they forced Jeremiah to go along with them. But even there, Jeremiah was speaking truth to them to such a degree that finally, the, to the best of our knowledge, outside of the sacred text, that Jeremiah was put to death by those very people who thought that by taking Jeremiah with them, that they would curry God's favor. Now, the second part of that question, did Jeremiah ever travel to the British Isles, what is now known as the British Isles? If that ever happened, friend, it's certainly not in the sacred text. It may have happened or may not have happened. I'm very doubtful myself, but it's not in the Bible and we're looking to the scriptures for what it has to say. It seems that Jeremiah, his life was much, much more confined than what some other voice or some other story has to say. Question number two, Numbers chapter 21 and verse 14 mentions the book of the wars of the Lord. Where can I find that book? One, one viewer is very curious to get a copy of that book, if in fact that is possible. 
This book, the book of the wars of the Lord, as mentioned here, and uh, a quote is taken from it, Waheb in Zufa, and the wadis of the Arnon, and the slope of the wadis that extends to the site of Ar, and leans to the border of Moab. Here we're talking in the account of the bronze serpent this text is taken. There are more than a dozen books which are mentioned, albeit very briefly, in the scriptures, books which have been subsequently lost to us and we simply do not have them. Or if we do have them, perhaps they are referring to one of the books of the Bible by a different name. We don't think so, but perhaps, uh, but, but those books are simply lost to us. Now, the question arises, well, if a book is lost and it's mentioned in the Bible, does that reflect badly? Does it bring some discredit upon the Bible? By no means. There are all kinds of texts which were lost in Old Testament times simply uh, due to the deterioration of the book or that it, it wasn't considered uh, as valuable to maintain and to keep it or wars or fire, all kinds of things come to mind. Or perhaps it is somewhere, this has taken place numerous times in archeology, span something that has been over the past 2000 or more years that we have read the scriptures, a place, a person, they say, well, this person isn't mentioned anywhere else. And suddenly we come across in the course of archaeology, an inscription or, or, or a dig and an inscription, and there it is, the person who is mentioned. Others, scoffers, have said, well, look, this person never existed. It's a figment of people's imagination. And there is credible evidence from outside of the scriptures that indeed these people did live and did exactly as the Bible speaks. And so these books they are lost to us. You can't go to the bookstore and find them. You can't order them online. They are simply out of our reach. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. Our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Tim Sturby now comes to sing Sheltered in the Arms of God. that high. 
fraud I'll fall asleep but I'll wake in God's new heaven sheltered safe within the arms of God so Repeatedly we hear from you, our viewers, of how much you enjoy the music of faith to live by, that it's difficult to hear this great music anywhere else. Well, you can hear it through the ministry of Faith to Live By resources. And I am announcing to you today that all of the songs included on today's broadcast are included on this brand new CD, A Closer Walk. It contains 14 songs, solos, duets, trios, quartet, as well as the full group, and you may enjoy these songs at your leisure. Let me list just a few of the songs which you will find on this brand new CD, A Closer Walk. Indeed, the title song by the quartet, A Closer Walk With Thee, He Hideth My Soul, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us, Then I Shall Live, I Will Sing of My Redeemer, I Must Tell Jesus, and so many more. Ask for your copy of A Closer Walk when you write or call to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Call us toll-free 1-833-367-3852 or our website faithtoliveby.ca also has a means of you contacting us. Now, once again, from this brand new CD, Lois, Rick, and join me in singing Grace Greater Than All Our Sin. i 
Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17, the Apostle Paul writes, So this I say, and affirm together with the Lord, that you walk no longer as the Gentiles also walk, in the futility of their mind, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. Paul is pulling no punches. He is laying it on the line. He is being as plain and direct as he needs to be because eternal matters are in the balance. Paul is writing to the believers in Ephesus and elsewhere, to us also. He extends this appeal over the ages and over the miles, and he talks to us about the body of the living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he is talking to us about what it is to be a part of the fellowship of the living church of God. He has laid down the groundwork, the theology and the doctrine in the first three chapters, and now in chapters four, five, and six, he gives us the definite outworking of that, and he is pleading with us. He is urgently beckoning us to attend to his words. And here in these few verses, he is keeping constant with this appeal. He says that the believers are not to walk as the Gentiles also walk. You might say that's a strange thing because there in Ephesus, there were Gentiles in the church of the living God. But Paul is saying, those Gentiles who are outside, those who have not come to know faith in Jesus Christ, those who are walking according to their own desires, that, that is not how you are to walk. You have had the light of Christ to shine in, and so you are to walk in that light and no longer to walk in the darkness of your former ways. Paul says, they having become callous, have given themselves over to sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. It is a dark picture indeed, which Paul paints, but it is a faithful and true one. Then Paul says, but you did not learn Christ in this way. Christ has come and he has ministered in your heart. He has drawn you to himself by his Holy Spirit and he is beckoning you to receive, not simply of the promise of life, but to receive of a different life here and now. You did not learn Christ in this way. You have been taught better. You have been shown that there is a calling upon your heart and life, and that Christ, he has made it possible that this, the shackles of sin might fall to the side and that you might walk straight and tall, and that you might no longer attend to these things which formerly were such an attraction and such a bondage to your spirit. You did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed, Paul, he is saying, are you really a follower of Christ? If you bite at each other, if you kick at each other, if you tear at one another, ask yourself the question, 
Have I really come to know the Lord of glory? Have I really had the work of His Spirit within my heart? Perhaps I need to get down on my knees once again and plead for His intercession. Perhaps there has gone something awry. Not God's fault, but perhaps I have had a roadblock in the way. Perhaps I have not been yielding to His Spirit. Paul now says, if indeed you have heard him, have you heard him and have been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lusts of deceit. For each and every one of us, there are things which must be set aside. Now, some people, they come from a very degraded lifestyle before coming to walk with Christ. Others say, well, I was never a criminal. I never killed anyone or stole. Or th Yet there is pride. Yet there is self-sufficiency. Yet there are so many things that we carry in ourselves. And whether it is theft or whether it is pride, there is things which each and every one of us must set aside when we come to walk with Christ and to be a part of his body, setting aside that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Oh, dear friend, I bid you, even as the Apostle Paul pleads with us, be renewed in your mind and let the Spirit of the living God come and speak to you and work in your heart. If you haven't come to know Christ, come to the cross and know his forgiveness and then walk each and every day and each and every moment in the power of the Spirit of the living God. There's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross. Today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 